<laughs> Hello, Band in a Box users. This is Henry Clark, Henry Clark's channel. Of course, if you like what I do, please subscribe, 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 right? I got to say that, got to say that. But today, you know, it's like, oh, solo meal, right? <laughs> no, it's about solos and how to do solos in Band in a Box, right? And a solo can be a great thing because a solo can actually set the song up. And a solo is also great if you throw a solo in the bridge, right? Um, really helps really helps lift the song up or take the song into a new dimension. Now, I'm not big on like 90,000 chord changes and all that kind of stuff. No, I mean, <laughs> some guys get so, so technical with band in the box or anything they do, right? You know, it's like, I need to change these 14 MIDI notes, you know. If you got to change 14 MIDI notes, you know what? You probably need to play it over again, right? <laughs> I had a boss that used to say, is it a tool or is it a task, right? You know, you wanted to use the product as a tool and not a task. If you spend all your time doing a task, right, then are you really getting anything out of the product? No, you know. You want to try to create, is the song good? Is this, And a lot of times, to be honest with you, the more simple the song is, the actually the better the song is. But again, I digress. Solos can help set the song up, right? And I'm going to show you my method for creating effective solos within Band in the Box. And of course, the DAW is an important component of that, right? Because of the way I kind of chop it up and splice it and stuff, right? But again, I'm going to show you how I, Henry does effective solos in Band in the Box. And that solo can be a guitar, it can be a piano, you know, it can be a saxophone, right? You know, you got to watch those guitar solo guys, man, because those guys, they love the first thing they do is they go back and they crank the amp up all the way, right? And hit, put their foot on like 14 different pedals, you know? And of course, you got to tell them when to stop also. Those guys will go on forever, you know? But anyway, I'm, I know I'm having fun. I'm having fun with solos right but hopefully you will be able to figure out and you will be able to learn how i do solos and you can incorporate some of my techniques into your songs going forward so again let me head on over to band in the box and i'm going to show you guys how henry does effective solos within band in the box right so be right back hold on Welcome back. And again, so we're going to do some soloing, right? Some soloing. And because I get tagged on um, on YouTube, right? I'm going to have to use one of my own songs. So you got to bear with one of my own songs. This is a song I, I wrote called uh, Do You Still Think About Me? And it's it's a ballad. It's a ballad, right? But what happened, I thought it was good for a solo because I set the song up with a solo. And it's got a solo during an eight-bar break, you know, in between the middle of the song and, you know, closer to the end. So anyway, so the song sounded something like this. It went like this. And I'm going, oh, that'd be nice to have a solo because I haven't started singing yet, right? So I go, this would be nice to have a solo in this part to set the song up. So of course, it was a matter of finding an instrument that would work, you know. But again, this is how his song sounded it's from a scratch pad perspective. As you can see my band in the box, right, how I wrote it here. You know, and then it comes in right here. I start singing. So a photograph, a memory of the past. Days when I was such a fool. So anyway, so yes, kind of a sense, all right. But what I wanted to do is again, as I said, oh, this would be nice to put a solo in the beginning of it, right? But what kind of instrument would be best for me, right? So again, I've got my pattern here. So this is the quickest way for me to do this, right? So I just went through and I just said, okay, let me try to find some different patterns, right? So I went through and said, okay, what instrument do I think might work, right? So I'm using this track here where it says pedal steel, right? So I says, okay, well, let's try it. Let's try it. And what I do is I actually go here, so select real tracks, right? And when I select real tracks, one of the things that I do is I type in the word soloist. So instead of going through all the tracks, like I'll go through here and I'll type in soloist. So let's just say I'm going to type in uh, guitar soloist, right? So I'll type in guitar and I'll put in soloist. And I'll do an update here, and it's going to show me guitar tracks. If you notice, it's going to show me guitar tracks that have a soloist flavor, right? I've got acoustic guitar soloists with gypsy jazz, right? Doing so on and so forth. I've got bluegrass. I've got laid back blues, right? So let's just, and I'll just pick one. So I'll just pick, let's try and see what it sounds like with a with a guitar soloist, right? From a laid back blues perspective, right? And just to give an idea what it may sound like. Uh, you know what? Uh, but I'll give it a shot, right? See what it sounds like. So I'll generate the track. So I'll go ahead and generate and just listen to it for a second. No, 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 no. That is not what we want. We don't, we don't want that one there, right? So let me see if I can find. So again, so I didn't like that one much, right? So I'm going to try to find another one. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to try to find another soloist track, right? And I've got some already saved here, right? 
So let's just go and just find some other solo. Let's try electric guitar soloist and see what we come up with, right? So I'm going to pick soloist. Let the, let the system generate and see what I get now from a soloist perspective, right? Um, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to find a mood for the song. This is really what I'm trying to do. Now that's not bad. It's like the top perspective. Right? That's a little brash. The song is a smooth song. So I'm not sure I want to keep that brash tone. So again, so it's a matter of trying to find the right type of instrument that you want to use a solo. And so once you find an instrument, then you can kind of play around with it in a massage and so on and so forth, right? So again, so we tried that. We tried a, a kind of a rock thing, right? So now I'm going to go back here again, and I'm going to look for a different soloist track. So I've got some soloist tracks here, right, that are recent, right? This is, okay, let's try let's try pedal steel. Let's try to see what it sounds like with a pedal steel sound, which is really interesting because this is kind of R and B song, right? And I'm a, it's an R and B smooth jazz song. I'm gonna put a steel pedal against it, right? But this is what we use band in the box for. We experiment to see what we can come up with. So this is it with a pedal steel soloist. Let's see what it sounds like. That's working for me, right? But it could work for you. Uh, it could work for you, right? But anyway, so that's a pedal steel. So this, again, what you're doing, you're trying to find something that fits your mood, again. And it, it depends on the type of song you're doing, right? Again, you, this is a smooth jazz R&B type of song. So I decided that I wanted, I, I didn't like the steel pedal. I didn't like the other instruments I picked, right? So again, so I said, this would be nice for a horn part, right? So let's try a saxophone. So again, I'm going here and I'm typing in saxophone. Soloist is what I want. So type. make sure you type in the word soloist now. That's important. So I type in the word soloist and I do an update. This gives me all the soloist type tracks, right? Oh, I didn't get anything. Okay, so maybe I'm missing something in my saxophone. Let's see if I just do saxophone and see what I come up with. And see how they and see how they label it. Because sometimes they may label it a little bit different. Plus it helps if you spell saxophone the right way, right? That <laughs> always helps. Okay, I'm not getting an update here for sax, so let's try trumpet and see what I can come up with. Let's see what let's see what trumpet says. Ah, okay, so I've got some trumpets here, right? So again, so what I've got trumpet soloist, right? So let's try something. I'm gonna try trumpet smooth jazz, right? So I've got this trumpet soloist, right? Again, so I'm gonna do again. I'm just to show you how to use this trumpet, and I'm gonna do soloist. And it, it, what it's going to do is it's only going to give me tracks that are trumpet soloists. And here they are down here, right? Got a little smooth jazz thing here. So let's see what we get here. Now that that might that might work, right? I, I mean, again, it's a it's a nice it's a nice tone for type the type of song it's in. It's okay, right? Um, I think I wanted something softer. The, the, the trumpet has such a, a bright, it's like a heavier tone, right? So I wanted something a little bit softer. But what I'm trying to show you is I'm trying to show you how you take your track and you audition different types of instruments that you may be interested in and doing a solo, right? And again, it all depends on the context of the song, right? If I was in a rock song, I'd probably have some type of electric guitar, you know, with distortion turned on or a resonator, right? If I do, this this sounds like almost like a muted trumpet and didn't like that. The the country didn't go with it, right? So I was like, mm, you know what? I don't like that one too much, right? And, and again, so I'm thinking maybe a saxophone is probably best. So what I'm going to do here, I'm looking at different things. And again, I've tried different soloists, right? The key point here is that set your song up first the type of song you want to do pick a track i happen to pick this track here pick a track go to real tracks because you want real tracks right go to real tracks and choose real and i can choose it from recent but i'll just choose real tracks from here and select real tracks right and again when you type in an instrument like if i type in nothing and this, and this will kind of give you it gives you an idea of how the how the the, the filter is coded right so if i do update see it gives me everything here right so again if i'm looking for this so let's just say i'm looking for uh, a, a saxophone, right? If I'm looking for a saxophone and I scroll down, let me see if I scroll down this sax. 
and see. Because it may be a naming convention sometimes. You can do electric, you can do acoustic guitars, right? So if I scroll down the saxophone, wait a minute, wow, we're really down there, aren't they? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. There we go. Oh, they, they don't call it saxophone, they call it sax. That's why, right? So again, so I'm going to do sax, comma, soloist, and do an update here. And it look and it shows me soprano soloist saxophone. So I can do a soprano sax and the different types of styles that you want to use it against, right? So again, if I pick a if I pick a, a sax soloist, right, I I'll just do smooth jazz, just for, you know, just for something to do. Hear what it sounds like. Wow, that's kind of piercing, right? You know, well let's see what happens as it smooths out against the pattern, right? So again, I'm picking a sax, right? I think that's kind of nice. I think it kind of fits the overall mood of the song that I'm after. So again, so I'm going to go with, I'm a, in this particular song, I decided to go with sax, right? So again, so what happens is that, um, I, so I actually, to save time, right? So I went to, I used different solos, right? So what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to use saxophone. I'm using saxophone. So I use the sax. So again, what I did was, and, and I, by the way, I made sure that when I did it, I did it, I did it against the pattern of the song. And what I mean by the pattern of the song is when did I want the sax to come in? When did I want the sax to go away? When did I want the sax to come in? When did I want, you know, and so on and so forth, right? So again, so I did, I did a sax. It's, it's giving me a nice little pattern. Now, I would want that in the beginning of the song, but it sounds like a great pattern for a break. It really does. But I've got my breaks in here, right? So this, this part's only going to play for eight bars. Don't pay attention to the other instruments because, again, when I do songs like this, right, I am not concerned with overall tone balance. I'm concerned with how it lays out. Again, this, this whole thing here is a sketch pad. I'm not going to use this when I go into my doll, but it gives me an idea of how I want the breaks to come in, what instruments I want to come in, what instruments I want to drop out. So again, so I found a sax. Now this is also interesting about it is that when you pick a soloist track, right? Notice I have the sax frozen here, right? If, and that's because as you regenerate in band in a box, it plays the track differently. So if I unfreeze, I'm gonna unfreeze the sax and I'm gonna generate. And you'll see how it changes. It's still in, in key and everything, but it changes the pattern of how the instrument actually plays. So again, so when I if I get something I like, I'll go back and I'll use it, freeze it, and I'll show you. I'll show you right here. See, it played different than it played the first time. It's playing differently. That's how it played now. So if, now, if I generate it again, it may play it again, totally, totally different, right? So that's important to recognize, and that's why I like to do this, the, the solos in my DAW. Um, we see how it plays this time. See, it's playing it differently again. Every time I regenerate it, it's gonna play the pattern different. But if I happen to stumble up on a pattern I like right off the bat, right, then what I would do is I will go ahead and I will freeze this track. By me freezing this track, what it does is it does not regenerate. It doesn't change the pattern when you regenerate. It changes other things, but it doesn't change the pattern when you regenerate. So if you find a pattern you like, you may want to use a freeze bar. But that's if you're going to do the entire song in Bad in the Box. I'm not going to do the entire song in Bad in the Box. I'm going to change it up because I want to use different pieces of the solo and put them where I want them at. So again, so that's another trick you can use, right? So for the last thing is what I do before I go into my DAW, and I always do this. Before I go into my doll, one of the things that I do is I take all of the breaks out. So I have the solo playing throughout the entire song. Now remember the song, the solo, the saxophone solo played for the first eight bars, right? So I'll just go ahead and play it for the first eight bars, right? But I'm getting ready to put this in my doll now, okay? So, see, that's too busy for an intro, but it might work in another section of the song. Still playing right now. In my, it's gonna play. 
This solo is going to play all the way through the entire song. No, you don't want it playing through the entire song, but the nice part about it is that if it does play through the entire song, then you can go back and you can pick out the pieces of when you want to hear it and when you don't. Right? I mean, nobody wants to hear sax solo the whole time. Well, actually, you do, but I mean, if you do, right, it, it's called an instrumental. Right? You know? So that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying, to, we're trying to, to add some accents and to add a different flavor to a song that we're already doing, right? So I've got my saxophone. I've got I've got my instrument. I have selected the instrument I want to use as a soloist in my track. That's what I have done. So what I did was I found the instrument. Remember, we tried guitar. We tried pedal steel guitar. We tried uh, trumpet. We tried trumpet, right? We tried uh, and we tried sax. You know, now you can try others, right? But we tried those, right? I happen to like the sax the best for this particular track. Again, maybe you like something else. I don't know, but I happen to like the sax the best, right? So now. I need to get this in my DAW, right? And I want to get it in my DAW and put it exactly where I wanted it, right? Now I have the DAW integration tool and I use Sonar, right? But before I put it in my DAW, and this is something I strongly recommend for all of you when you move tracks over, notice my faders here are almost pre-mixed. When I'm going into my DAW, I don't want to do that. I'm going to take them all the way up to between 90 and, and close to 100. I'm going to take all of them up there. And the reason why is because when you put them in your DAW, this affects the waveforms that go into your DAW. And you want nice, clean waves because, let's be honest, it's easier to lower the volume of the wave file than it is to take it up. So what I do is I take the volumes up if I'm going to go into my DAW, first of all. I take Number one is I take the volumes up. Number two is I make sure that I have no instruments resting anywhere. So if you look at my bar settings now, my bar settings are clean. In other words, what I want is I want every instrument playing throughout the entire song. I will make my changes when I go into my DAW. So again, so I take all of my accents off and I make sure all of my volumes are in the 100 range before I do it. Now when I go to my DAW integration tool, which is here, I do DAW integration, right? I have my, my um, sonar up. And now, in this case, I'm only taking the sax over, right? That's just that's because that's all I need. I've done the rest of the tracks. I've already dragged them over. And if you were before, I, you would have seen me drag them over. I don't want to take you through all of that. But I'll just take the sax and I'll just drag the sax over to this track 15 here. So I'm going to drag the sax over. And notice, as, as, as this integration tool is really cool. I really like this, right? But so I'm taking it and I'm dragging the tracks over. So I'm dragging the tracks over into my sonar, right? Um, just, just putting it together. Just putting it together. And what happens is that after it's in my sonar, right, then I will play around with it, you know, and see what I want to do with it, so on and so forth, right? So, again, it's being dragged over now. Notice it's creating a WAV file, and it's going to go ahead on and it's going to drag that track over into sonar, right? Um, it takes a second sometimes, right? And, again, I'm not going to take you through, you know, all of um, what's the point of you looking at a video with a bunch of tracks being dragged over, right? It's like a waste of time. You know, you can do that on your own. But this is this is an important step here. And the reason why it's an important step is because once I get this saxophone into my sonar, then I can play with it. I can chop it. I can edit it. I can put it exactly where I want to put it at. That is the most important thing. Because again, the sax, I'm playing the solo all the way through. Notice the track is it's being loading now. It's loading now. So now again, I'm not gonna I don't need my bandit box anymore, so I'm gonna close that down. So now my track is in my, my my saxophone solo is in sonar, and here it is right here. So this is my sax solo in sonar. Notice it's playing right off the bat. I think I need to cut uh, I need to cut a, uh, a bar off because I've I've made some different alignments is what I did, and probably probably doesn't help none. Uh, so I'm going to cut it and I'm going to move it over. Hopefully it aligns. We can see if it aligns up there. Uh, I think I need to cut it a little bit more. So maybe maybe I do another. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do a small edit. See if I can bring it over a little bit more, because uh, I need I need it to line up right, and I did. This is something that I didn't do before, which I should have done. I should have done that, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't do that, right? So um, I think we cut it a little bit more. Let's see if I can get that bad boy lined up over here. Uh, it should be pretty close, pretty close. Uh, let me see if I mute. I'm going to mute the original sax. And let me see if I do that. Uh, see what we get here. I need to move that over about a, a 16th beat. And let's see what we get here. That looks fine. See, now notice again. So, so I've got, now I've got it with the rest of my music, right? 
but notice it's playing, it's playing a soul all the way through, right? Which is not what I want. And that's too busy. There are certain pieces of this solo that I do want, right? Because of the fact that there are certain pieces of this solo that I do want, I can play around with that now, right? So I can take the actual pieces of the saxophone that I like, I can take, I can chop them, I can move them. Maybe I want to move this part here down into maybe bar 40 some. Maybe I want to silence all of this effort here. And by, and by dragging the entire solo over, now I can play with the different elements because the solo, it's, it's going to have some good parts in it, right? Not crazy about that part here. If I go down here and listen to this part, I like that part there. Maybe I can use that part there somewhere else, right? If I go down a little further, you know, maybe I could take, maybe I could use that part, right? So again, so what I do is I take the entire solo, drag it over into my doll and take pieces of the instrument and put it where I want to put it at. So if I go back and take the saxophone solo, and I'm going to go ahead and mute this, right? Because I actually did a full edit for you. And if I take it, I'm muted, I'm not going to play the whole song, but I'm just going to play a portion of it. And I'll show you how it came out using this technique of actually editing and altering your solo instrument so that it fits the overall mood of the song. So this is the song, and this is with it with all of the, with an altered sax one, I'll put it like that. Sounds great to me. That's just a, that's a system generated saxophone. And I wanted it calm in the beginning, right? It's kind of sad, you know, yeah, but I wanted, I wanted it calm. Also important, important thing, when you put solos, if you're gonna put solos inside of a song, and, and you're doing that right, don't have a solo abruptly just cut. You don't want to do that, right? I started singing at, I think it was bar nine I started singing at. Oh, let me see. See, so I started singing at bar nine, but what I did was instead of having a solo just abruptly end, you know, and again, a solo, it just won't end like that, right? So what I did was I took and I adjusted the wave file so that it would actually fade as I was starting to sing. So it would, the solo wouldn't overpower me. It wasn't over, but it was like fading out, right? So if you listen to it again, if you see, if you listen to the way I did it, is the solo was playing full here and it started fading, slowly fading here. makes it a much smoother transition, which is what you would have if you were doing the song for real, right? Not for, I mean, not for real, you're doing the song for real anyway, <laughs> you know? But if you were doing the song with a bunch of musicians, right? They wouldn't just, he wouldn't, the guitar wouldn't just stop on that chord, right? Or the saxophone player wouldn't just, da -da 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 -da. you know, it wouldn't happen like that. He would fade it out. And that's what I'm doing here through the wave file. I'm actually manipulating the wave file so that it actually fades as, this, as the, the vocals come in and overtake it. So there's like an overlap that's taking place at that point. And again, so I, I decided to do that. <clears throat> and then because I wanted us also, I wanted a solo in the middle of the song, right? Um, I had finished the second verse, right? I says, okay, I need a break here and I'm going to put a solo in, in, in the middle of the song, right? So as I went through the song and I went through the middle of the song, I'm getting this. That's the second hook right there. So instead of doing a bridge, I decided to do a solo again. Same saxophone. I think it fits absolutely perfect. I'm doing my fade again here because I'm getting ready to start singing, so make sure I fade that out. And I'm back into my song. And 
again, so that's how I did it, right? And, and again, this entire track, every every instrument, every piece of music that you hear was done in Band in a Box. You can do this in Band in a Box, right? You have some cuts, you have some edits, you do some chops, a few things like that. And guess what? You're off and running, you know? So again, just I just want to show you guys how I do solos in Band in a Box. Is what I do is step one, what do I do? I lay my track out first. Step two. If I decide I want to do a solo, I determine what type of instrument I want that solo to be. Uh, so I'll play around with different real track instruments, right? And remember, when I go into the search window, when I put that instrument in there, right, I also put that instrument in and I type the word soloist behind that instrument so that, that the, 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 um, the database will give me tracks that actually show the soloist capability, right? So I do that next. When I find an instrument that I like and I pick it, I demonstrate it or I audition it within the song the way I have it set up in the song, which means that when I say audition it, what I mean is that I'll still have my, my filters on, I'll still have my brakes on so that it only plays when I want to hear it, right? Once I decide that I like that, I will freeze that instrument. I will free, if I find a pattern, I will freeze that instrument so that it plays that pattern repeatedly, right? And then... I, next thing I do is I take all of my breaks off, take all of my volumes up into the 90 to 100 range. If I use, if I'm using my DAW, I use DAW integration. And I just drag it over to my DAW, and I in turn manipulate the actual solo from that point forward. And remember, what I do is also is that I do not abruptly end a solo. I try to always have a solo fade into. Where the, where, the, where the rhythm is taking. So if, if I'm going to start singing again, right, I don't have the solo end abruptly. I have it actually fade over. So again, that's how Henry does solos in Band in the Box. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it wasn't too long. I've been talking the whole time, and I, I really didn't keep a timer this time, right? Um, but again, hope you like what I did. And if you also like what I did, please subscribe to my channel. You know, um, it's always a pleasure doing these things. If you have questions or comments, please put them in the questions or comment box. I will be happy to help you guys out any way I can. And I will see you next time, okay? Bye.